Hello and welcome back to my channel for yet another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. So today I'm going to talk about the effect that you've seen in the intro. Uh, specifically the Polaroid paper zooming in and then onto the next clip. And you might wonder why this tutorial? That is because someone had asked me to fa on Facebook on how I did that uh, this transition. So I have the obligation to share it with you. So I'm going to shout out to Jen Alfaro for asking that question. It is practically very easy actually. By the way, there is no official name to this. Uh, so I'm just going to call it photo zoom in transition. Let's head on to our DaVinci Resolve 16. All right, as you can see, I have two clips in here. So the first one will, will be the clip underneath the second one. This is just a normal hyperlapse, two hyperlapse videos clipped together. And as you can see, I did some color changes in there from color and desaturated it to black and white and then back to its color mode. Nothing really fancy here. I'm not going to take any time explaining about the color change, but basically I just went on to desaturate the colors in the middle of the combined clips. So the second clip is the one I shot separately. So your subject holding the photo paper itself, the subject being me. This is actually a video and took at a certain frame and freeze on that specific frame. But you can actually use a still photo. And then what happens, so this is already a compound clip. Let me just go into the clip and show you the original so I can show you uh, that I masked out inside the photo. I'm, I'm just going to show you quickly how I mask out that photo. So let's uh, go jump into our color tab. So in masking out in color tab, the first thing I'm going to do is to add an alpha output. So let me just reset this node, but first by right clicking the node and then select reset node. How to add the alpha output is by right clicking anywhere the white space and then add alpha output. We had it already here. So the next thing I'm going to do is to connect the alpha output of our node to the alpha alpha output here. Okay, I'm gonna go down to our windows down here and select the curve. And then I'm just gonna draw a square inside our photo composition. Just like that. I'm going to soften the edges down here to see the area being affected. I'm gonna turn on the highlight up here. Uh, we see that the gray area is the one being masked off and we don't want that. So we're going to go back down to our curve and select invert. Now we can adjust the edges as it is not fully being masked off. We can actually use the outside property as well. So there you go. I think uh, we're okay with that. And to test it out, let's go back to the main edit tab and we'll just use a sample clip here to check if it is working. Perfect. Okay, as you can see, it is working. And one more thing, the second clip should be aligned with our clip below, which is our first clip. Otherwise, it's going to be weird. So out of these two clips, we're gonna make one clip. And to do that, right click and make a new compound clip. But I'm not gonna do that, we already have it here. So on few frames before the clip ends, and I'm just gonna put a red marker on that so that it's easier to tell maybe six frames before the clip ends. Add a keyframe. And by adding a keyframe, I'm going to go to our inspector tab, click this diamond shape icon along our zoom X and Y. When it turns red, it means that that particular property is being keyframed. And then on one frame just before the clip ends, I'm going to add another marker. That's where we're gonna put another keyframe on. So I'll go back to our inspector tab and keyframe it. So for those of you who doesn't really know what keyframing exactly is, is that if keyframe on whatever the value you set on, on that particular property and on that particular point in the timeline is what's going to show you on your screen during playback. So that's keyframing. So in this example, we set the keyframe on zoom X and Y and it's going to zoom in until we don't see the edges of the photo paper anymore. And then onto the next frame. The next clip is showing the camera movement being upward and actually it should not work on a smooth transition from the clip from the last frame of the preceding clip being zoomed in and then 
onto the start of the next clip which is upward camera movement but i believe somehow it kind of worked together and thus created this smooth transition it's like a trick sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and then we'll play back again one more time to see that transition There you go guys, I hope you learned something from this tutorial. If you like this video, please click a thumbs up. And if you don't, please feel free to suggest anything I should cover next and for the next one. By the way, I'm going to start a new playlist that is all about drones. As you can see, I already have some videos all about that and I've been dreading to make some vlog about it and I'm gonna call it, I already call it all that drone. So see you on the next one, have a safe day ahead. That's it.